I thought my life was over five years ago when I lost the use of my legs. Um... Welcome back to another episode of Mad Attackers. Before we begin, number one, I need to say thank you because our subscribers are steadily climbing and we are almost on 700. That being said, I took a look at the stats and over 70% of us are not yet subscribed. So if you're brand new yet and you're not yet a subscriber, hit that button down below. I put in three workouts over the last three days without missing a single day. The positive response and feedback on the previous episode with Alvain, really great news because I have a ton of content in the chamber from him for you guys. For somebody who's repeatedly making bullshit excuses about why they can't train, what is the one thing that you would tell them to help them get going? People tend to make excuses if they don't have like a definite goal. I would just tell them or ask them rather, what is your goal? Because if you're just doing it to lose weight, one, that's not a definite goal. You must be more specific and you need a deadline. You need a target. Even myself, I can't just exercise. I need to know where I'm going and why I'm doing it. You're not going to have the motivation to get up every day and pursue that goal. You need something very close to the heart, something that you want to do. Purpose drives motivation. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in purpose. For a complete novice who has never competed in an Ironman, what is the first step that they should take to get started? Get a coach. You don't have someone that you're accountable to or that can keep you accountable. Everyone kind of needs that someone. It doesn't necessarily have to be a coach. I would recommend a coach. They can structure your workouts better. They can teach you better. Honestly, you're going to move a lot faster with a coach than you would on your own because as a complete novice, you don't know anything about the sport. You don't know anything about cycling, swimming or running. It's actually very technical. Doing three sports in one is definitely no easy task. You only have so many hours in a day, in a week to train. So you need to be really smart about that, how you go about training and a coach can analyze you as an athlete and see where you're at and get you to where you want to be with a structured program. What are two things that you've gained through doing Ironman that you never expected you would? The first thing is I can definitely say that mentally your mind just goes through some unbelievable things that I never would have experienced if I didn't do an Ironman. You go into some places in your mind where <laughs> you're in so much pain and you just want to give up. It's incredible what you're capable of. So that's the one thing that I've learned, how to use my mind in those moments. Your mind is an extremely strong tool. Number two, I never thought I would make a career out of it. When I was on my legs, I thought these people must be crazy. You must be mental. How can you swim 3.8 kilometers, then bike 180 kilometers, and then do a marathon? You must be mental. There must be something wrong with you. It's funny to think that this is what I do now for a career, that I'm an Ironman athlete. And I don't do it on my legs. I do it with my arms for the time being. That's the beauty of life. You know, you think you're going in one direction and then it just takes you completely the opposite direction. My car accident was five years ago. I never thought it would happen in my entire life. I never thought it would happen to me, but it did. What we make of it is that is the art of life, really. You can't predict these things. You can't control your reaction to it. No matter how dark a situation is or your life is, you can turn around. You can make something of it. I thought my life was over five years ago when I lost the use of my legs. Um... I thought it was over. I thought, why? It's not even worth living anymore. What I've made of it is a better life than I had before. You put yourself through an enormous amount of mental and physical pain. What is the one thing you keep in mind when things get really, really tough to help push yourself through? Jeez. What works for me is not going to work for the next person. I know everything that I've been through. That I broke my back and I'm in a wheelchair. I refuse to give up. So in a race, that is what keeps me going. And I'm not saying like, yeah, you're tough and you can push through something. I'm telling you that I refuse to give up. That you would rather carry me off that course than me giving up because something was too tough. I can think back to what I went through. It's stored in my in my brain. I can go and I can go fetch those emotions, that event, that feeling that I had when a lot of things got stolen from me that day. And I can use that as fuel and that can pull me through. You can use your pain or it can use you. And I just choose to use my pain, especially in moments like those. Or you can use the love that you feel from other people. If your spouse or friends and family are there, you can do it for other people. I I think that is also something so powerful that if you can draw strength not from yourself but from other people that's a great tool be selfless in the pursuit of that event <laughs> Today's question comes in from Mad Attacker Paul and it says, what is your favorite holiday? Super simple one, hands down, has to be Christmas. To you who stopped what you were doing to give this a watch, my deepest thanks. I will catch each and every one of you beautiful mad attackers in the next one. Go hustle, go great, and I'll see you then. Peace.